Hello, today we're building a ramp for this shed that sits on a sloped yard. So whether you have your shed built or delivered, most likely you need a ramp. And if it sits on a sloped yard like mine, you actually have to custom build a ramp. To start, first you need to know how wide of a ramp you want and where the joists are going to be located. My goal is to have the joists 12 inches apart. Then I laid out how far out the ramp should be. This will be different for everyone. For me, what I try to have is a 212 pitch, which means for every 12 inches, my ramp will go down 2 inches. Roughly, this is about a 10 degree ramp. Then I started to clear some of the top soil and dirt. My goal was to have a 2 inch gravel pad so the ramp can sit right on top of it. But what I recommend is that you don't do any of the digging just yet. Let's get some of the framing out of the way. For this project I'm using 2x6 pressure treated lumber. I measure and cut a 4 foot section. This will be used as a ledger board for the ramp. A 4 foot ledger board will give me a four foot wide ramp. I centered the ledger board to the door opening and temporarily attached it to the shed with just a few screws. I made sure that it was at least inch and a half down from the shed floor. I used a piece of 2x6 as a guide. I bring in two 2x6s to be used as an outside joist. I temporarily secure the joist to the ledger with a clamp. If you don't have a clamp, feel free to drive a screw right into the board. That will keep the board in place while we work at it. Then I make sure that both of them are square to each other. I needed to make sure that my ramp could clear the edge of the pad and also that the ramp had the right slope. For my ramp is that for every 12 inches I drop down 2 inches. And once you satisfy with the slope of one of the boards, all you have to do is transfer that over to the other board using a level. If you don't have a long level, just grab another piece of 2x6 and use that as a guide for your level. All right, so here's where I made a mistake and you've probably seen this as well. I dug my base early on. Actually, what I recommend is that you lay out your ledger boards, you cut them, you fit them in place, then you dig your gravel base. Now I mark my cuts. I lay a level or you can use a piece of 2x6 against the ledger board to mark the first cut. And on the other side, I lay a 2x6 flat on the ground to mark the second cut. This is the easiest way to mark your cuts and you don't have to do any math. Now all I have to do is run a circular saw on both of these cuts. One thing that I recommend is that you get yourself a new blade. It is very difficult to cut wet pressure treated lumber with a dull blade. And here you can see what the ramp will look like. With one joist cut, it's time to move to the second. Most likely the second joist won't be level. I had to cut back the board, then try to level against the far joist. You can use the scrap pieces to help level the joist. And just like before, place a 2x6 against the floor and mark your cuts. With a circular saw, I cut the second board and I put it in place. Then I check for level. I continue the same process for the next few joists. Because I have an uneven ground, I need to work on each joist individually, laying them out, measuring and cutting one at a time. Oh, 
Okay, now that I have cut the ledge of board and the joist, I'm gonna take them back out and correct the gravel pad that I've dug earlier. What I'm trying to do is make sure that the gravel pad is right underneath of the joist and that I have at least inch to two inches of clearance which I'm gonna fill with gravel. That way when there's rain, the water have space to run through and drain out so you're not collecting water underneath the joist for a long period of time. I did use a weed barrier underneath the gravel. This was left over from building the shed early on. I definitely recommend this if you want to prolong the life of the ramp. Along with that I used six bags of gravel. I took the joist Flip them upside down and spray flax seal on the bottom where it's going to be in contact with the ground. A can of flax seal is pretty inexpensive and I believe it can prolong the life of the ramp. For these five joists I used a whole can. I probably could use the last if I needed a can for something else. It is time to assemble the ramp. For this, I'm using 2.5 inch GRK screws. It is a little pricier than other screws, but they're very good screws and help prevent wood split. For each of the joists, I drive three screws. Then I attach the ramp to the shed using 3 inch long structural screws. To pry the ramp up I use couple angle scrap pieces that we cut early on. And as always to help maintain the inch and a half from the shed floor I use a piece of 2x6 as a guide. On the short joist, I measure 6 inches from the end and I place a 2x6 across all of them. I use this to square up all the joists one at a time. And now that the ramp is squared, you just take one 2x6 at a time and install them going upwards. On my last row, I needed to rip a piece of 2x6. Depending on how you lay this out, you may not need to do so. I laid a piece of 2x6 across the beginning of the ramp. I believe having a full piece across the beginning will provide a better support to the angle cuts that we are about to make. And to make sure that the angle cuts will have full support when sitting on the ramp, I added blocking across the whole ramp. And this is a good time to grab all the scrap pieces you have laying around and use it for these angle cuts. You can either use the 2x6 or a level to mark these cuts and then you cut one at a time with a circular saw. And then I have to screw in the 2x6 to the joist and to the blocking. And just like any other DIY project, I ran out of material. So I'm going to go to the store, get another piece of lumber to go on my last row and another bag of gravel to make this transition a little better. And that's why we do these videos so you have a chance to see and look for what you need when it's your time to do your own DIY projects. And anything shed related, make sure you check out our channel. And if you're trying to build your own shed, go to everydayshed.com. We have material lists, plans, and videos that go together helping you build your own shed.
and back from the store I cut to fit the last 2x6 piece and I added one bag of gravel to help on the transition from the ramp to the ground. And now I can say that this ramp came out pretty beefy. It can't stand a riding lawn mower or even a four wheeler if you have one. But we're not just done yet. Depending how your shed is, you may have to do some adjustments to the door so it closes completely. For me, I do have to cut the bottom of the door so it can close fully and be able to lock it. And if you're thinking about building a shed, this one, it's an eight by 12. And actually I have a video right here where I go from beginning to the end, step by step, showing you how, that's, how it's built. I hope you like this video and I'll see you the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.